Uh, a welcome to everyone from me and Tristan. Um, we're, we've got uh, quite a, 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 a presentation here. Uh, we're hopefully um, going to cover some of the main habitats uh, that uh, we uh, are of value for uh, terrestrial head bugs. And uh, just a little introduction, really. Um, the, the reason why it's important to look at uh, habitats, uh, terrestrial bugs do provide a significant uh, proportion of diversity uh, in, in many habitats, such as woodlands and grasslands. And they also form quite a lot of uh, the biomass. So they're, they're important uh, components of any invertebrate this, uh, uh, assemblage. Um, so they include lots of species that are phytophagous on, on lots of different plants. And, but they also include uh, many that are, have, are more restricted to certain types of uh, plant or, or even single species. So, um, and often these occur in uh, habitats of, uh, that are, are, are scarce or uh, uh, with a restricted distribution. Uh, and these can be used as uh, indicators of habitat quality. So it's important to, to, to know about the, 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 the function in, and, and role in such habitats. Uh, so the, the main uh, emphasis on this, presentation is is actually terrestrial plant bugs because we've both already got quite a lot of information on on this uh, about the shield bugs but I will be referring to some shield bugs so um, if we carry on uh, here's a here's a sort of rundown of what I'm intending to cover uh, we're, we're intending to cover uh, this evening and uh, these are uh, really the, the bit selective, I suppose, uh, but I think these are the, the, ma the main habitats that we're sort of uh, going to cover uh, with a, a few examples of, of, of uh, e each from, uh, from each habitat. Uh, so hopefully uh, there's uh, something there for everyone. Um, so I'll start with woodland. Um, so terrestrial bugs in woodland, um, just some general uh, principles really. Uh, I mean, woodland is an important habitat for terrestrial bugs. And um, there are a large number that are found in uh, uh, the, the types in, in, in Britain and Ireland. And they uh, form do, do form a com significant com component of the arboreal assemblage, uh, assemblages uh, of insects. So, um, but, none of them are really specialized or very uncommon and, and they can be found outside woodland situations, um, you know, wherever the host trees are present really. And uh, similarly, terrestrial bugs of woodland floor, they're, they're, they're also mostly generalists and can be found, uh, easily found outside uh, a woodland uh, context. Uh, although there are one or two probably that uh, uh, would, um, merit uh, being considered, you know, proper woodland uh, invertebrates. Uh, sorry for the word, <laughs> a bit wordy here. Uh, so uh, woodlands uh, that are of value to, uh, to, to terrestrial bugs have, um, it should have some sort of um, structural diversity of ve vegetation uh, and, and also be diverse in their, in their vegetation composition. So, um, and uniform uh, sort of habitats in, you know, blocks of plantations with little regeneration, uh, they, they have a very poor fauna. So, uh, uh, and in terms of uh, sort of utilizing deadwood, uh, we only have the uh, one family of, uh, one small family of uh, head, head bugs, the bark bugs and flat bugs that have evolved to um, utilize uh, that resource by feeding on the fungal hyphae. Uh, usually they, they, they are found under, under bark. Um, so woodland rides and glades are also often where faunas are, are most diverse. You get a combination of sort of grassland uh, species and even some specialist species, certainly uh, further down uh, uh, in the south of the country. Um, 
and depending on hydrology and pH, woodlands may support species that are characteristic of, of, of wetland or even heathy habitats. Um, so uh, the following two sections, we're going to look at deciduous woodlands and also uh, coniferous woodlands, I suppose by implication mixed woodlands as well. Um, so uh, start off with terrestrial deciduous woodland, just looking at some of the characteristic species of the uh, assemblages uh, that we, we hit bug assemblages that we find here. And uh, I'm looking at really species of, of tree really. So we're starting off with oak, because uh, I, th I think that's uh, really uh, the, 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 the classic sort of uh, assemblage really. And there is a fairly uh, diverse um, uh, 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 sort of, group of uh, hep bugs that do occur on, on, on oak. And I've listed some of them here. So uh, I've got pictures at the bottom of some of the more distinctive ones that uh, you can come across. And uh, for instance, Harpocera thoracica is, is an early season species. So you don't get that much more, um, you don't get many records sort of beyond the mid June or late June really. Uh, so there, there's a sort of bit of a season for them. Um, uh, also, um, there's several species of salus. Um, salus are a, a, a large group of myriad bugs. Um, they're, they're all sort of myriads here that I've listed. Uh, they seem to be particularly rich in, in, in uh, deciduous woodlands and, and also coniferous, I think. Um, uh, and many, uh, many of the salus, uh, they, they also have a season, which I'll go into in the next slide. Many, just just to mention that many of our native oak dwelling bugs are now able to utilize non-native oaks. And I've, I've found that from experience in, in my field work uh, that uh, uh, evergreen oak and turkey oak seem to provide uh, 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 sort of new hosts for these species. Oops. Uh, so just a rundown on the salus species on oak, uh, that there's six regularly <laughs> recorded species of salus on oak. And uh, but some of them do a, not only occur on oak, but utilize other uh, deciduous uh, trees. But salus variants from that list uh, from that list is probably the commonest one that uh, that, that is encountered. Really, some are, are sort of local. And then there are four newly established species on new turkey oak, uh, in, in all in a short period of time. Really, um, uh, mostly the records of those are down in the south, and uh, they are currently confined to. To, to turkey oak and they're more sort of found in uh, urban suburban situations um, artificial habitats uh, seasonality quick one of um, the seasonality of adult oak dwelling salus so if you're going to sample for salus species uh, the best time of the year is you know june and july as you can see salus variants has a has a long season as well as being the one of the commonest species to find um look at birch <laughs> there are nine uh birch species and four are plant bugs uh, again plant bugs are they are the largest family so you're going to get the largest number of species in in any kind of assemblage um uh they they, they have that facility uh and uh we've got uh two species here, Salus betuleti and Montanus, and uh, Montanus was uh, recognised as a British species and it's been previously confused for betuleti. Um, uh, Montanus, I must say, I, I frequently, uh, more frequently record this than betuleti. I think I've only ever recorded betuleti in the field once um, uh, and uh, the males are, are, are the, probably the best reliable way of separating them. But Montanus is more red and uh, Betuleti is quite dark uh, in, in the field. Uh, and that's an indicator. Uh, so yes, um, we're not clear about what their, their sort of relationship and role in, in birch woodland is. Uh, Another couple of birch species, again, plant bugs, uh, Salus valeni. Um, this is a late season species uh, and it's widespread in Britain and Ireland. And it's one of these uh, Salus species that can be uh, ID'd without, um, without dissection actually. So uh, one to look out for uh, well into the season. Uh, Neoligus contaminatus. Um, 
it's uh, a confusingly green bug, but it's very, uh, it is very common on birch, but it is also uh, often found on alder and, and, and uh, even rudels like nettles in the, in the surrounding area. And it's widespread, uh, a very widespread species. Um, I find that uh, just getting males and dissecting them is, 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 is rather uh, helpful, but yeah. Birch species again, Cladiceris residae uh, of the ground bug family, birch catkin bug. It's uh, very abundant on on birch catkins at the when it's uh, at the height of the season in summer, and um, uh, it's similar to the uh, heather bug. And the two I have been confused uh, uh, a lot in the past, uh, and. Um, that, that one of the one of the things is is that the heather heather um, bug is is uh, overall smaller than the birch catkin bug, but most records away from heathlands are are a birch catkin bug. Um, and then we have two species of um, a flat a flat bug um, and bark bug, uh, Arada speculi and Aradus depressus, which is illustrated here. Aradus speculi is a, a rare species in, in Scotland, in places like, um, uh, I think, Invernessshire, I think, uh, quite restricted up there. And Aradus depressus is very widespread. It's probably one of our white, most widespread um, uh, uh, flat bugs. And, and both occur on uh, birch stumps and uh, birch um, uh, 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 fallen birch, uh, uh, and in addition, the the just briefly, there are two acanthosomatid shield bugs, the uh, parent and birch shield bugs, very uh, common and widespread, and that sort of uh, is 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 sort of completes the com uh, complement on on birch uh, the assemblage of birch um, bugs. Uh, there are other uh, species like the plant bugs Pantelius tunicurtis and Blepharodopterus angulatus that, that can be found and there's probably a few others that could be added to that as well. So uh, uh, so ash woodlands um, widespread across Britain but um, not, not, not rare relics in Ireland. Uh, there are, I wanted to sort of like focus in on, on again, uh, all these are uh, uh, myridae, plant bugs, and uh, they are, uh, I've illustrated them uh, at the bottom there, and they're very distinctive, uh, well, uh, Pseudoloxus cosineus is, is uh, quite a distinctive species, but I only ever find, uh, when I find this in the field, I only ever find one specimen. And I think a lot of um, a lot of the uh, biomasses in high up, high up in the, uh, the the canopy, really. Uh, so I only get a, a a small snapshot of what uh, the population is in any kind of ash woodland or ash copse. Uh, and there are some uh, two species there in the middle: Brachynotocorus punctacornis and Tropidosteptes pacificus. They're relatively new to the fauna in the UK, and uh, Tropidosteptes pacificus originally from North America, but is uh, spread up to um, Cheshire, I think, and and uh, and possibly with potential to occur in Yorkshire as well. Brachynotocorus punctacornis, uh, which is the male and female there. Uh, shown uh, is um, I recorded that new to Yorkshire last year, and uh, it's um, it occurs not just in, uh, well, most of the records are from parkland ash in parklands <laughs> at the moment, so uh, we need to do more sampling to see how far that's uh, getting around. Uh, there are couple of other, a few other species that you do find regularly on ash, Pinolita savinus and Blepharodopterus angulatus, black knee cat seed. Uh, the last one looking a bit like Brachinotaurus punctacornis because it's um, uh, fairly green, uh, a fairly green species, but it, it is easily separated on close examination. Uh, so moving on, um, I hope I'm going the right way here. Um, yeah. Um, over the coniferous woodland. I mean, I could have done a, a whole presentation on, on species on coniferous woodland and deciduous woodland. Um, and we've got 
uh, 29 species um, that are depend in some way on, on, on conifers. So it's not an insignificant uh, number of, of uh, hep bugs that are found on, on, uh, on conifers. Uh, as you can see, 18 species uh, are, are formed from the Maridae. And uh, a lot of, most of the species occur on Scots pine with several utilizing more, more than one kind of conifer type. Uh, no species known to use native yew as a host. Um, and many of these species occur in a wide variety of situations in, in uh, artificial uh, settings uh, uh, and plantations, uh, but also including uh, native Cal Caledonian forest in, in the north and in Scotland. Oops, sorry. Um, so just to mention, uh, there is a vast amount of woodland, uh, woodland uh, coniferous woodland resource here. So it's, it's, um, it, it, it does seem that uh, the uh, head bugs have managed to exploit this. So there's just a list of some of the main species that are, 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 are found in our plantations and, and where head bugs have been recorded from. And the distribution of some uh, of the coniferous head bugs has probably been greatly influenced. Uh, by, uh, by artificial plantings, uh, particularly after the First World War. Uh, sampling and recording, um, I probably goes without saying this. Um, I mean, a lot of pine stands and other, other coniferous stands are often inaccessible due to the, the height of the canopy. So we're relying on a lot of, um, of uh, young uh, trees and, and bushes uh, to, to supply us with uh, 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 easy access for sampling. Um, but uh, also one thing to keep in mind is that uh, they, there is Phytophthora um, that is proving to be uh, a threat to uh, some conifers in some regions, uh, particularly on the west, uh, western half of the UK. And uh, larch is um, one tree that has suffered uh, tremendously, and we've got signs of uh, that uh, disease here in, in Yorkshire. Um, and other conifers potentially affected in the vicinity uh, and possibly uh, uh, Sitka spruce. Um, so uh, just to sort of start with sort of uh, the um, probably native uh, conifer, real native coniferous uh, Caledonian uh, uh, woodland uh, species, uh, certainly specialist. The Zygemus nigrisets on the right is, um, is, a, is a plant bug that's uh, distribution is, is really northern Europe, um, you know, going into high Sweden uh, and Russia. And <clears throat> it occurs on juniper scrub. Um, only present in the eastern highlands of Scotland. I think it was a relatively recently sort of discovered um, bug. I think the first records came from um, from specimens collected in 1911, I think, but um, don't quote me on that. Uh, recorded up to an altitude of 1300 uh, feet. And it, it seems to uh, exist in very small, can exist in small populations. So it, it, it seems to have some uh, dem demands on uh, the type of microclimate that it occupies. So um, certainly an interesting species uh, that uh, uh, is, I think, fairly stable in terms of status. Uh, Orthotylus fusessens on the left-hand side is a is a is a is is a Scots pine um, uh, species, and again from uh, you know the mostly Caledonian pine woodland uh, records, but there's also record uh, records from uh, some pine plantations in 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 the wider area. Um, it's quite widespread in Europe. I don't think it's. Um, it, I don't think it's sort of restricted to to, to this special. Um, uh, well, I, I mean, uh, the pine plantations uh, seems to uh, imply that it has wider um, sort of habitat tolerances, uh, and, and certainly that's the case on the continent. Uh, 
another interesting species that um, uh, Phytochoris pinny, uh, also found on Scots pines and also non-natives, and fairly widespread uh, in terms of records right down to Surrey and possibly under-recorded. Uh, uh, I would agree with that and best obtained um, uh, from beating the branches of, of, of pine and mainly a predatory species that feeds on pine aphids, um, which are one species I've got illustrated there and, and probably several other species. This is, um, uh, there are a number of, of, of uh, coniferous myriads that, that do uh, uh, preferentially uh, uh, feed on, on aphids, uh, pine aphids, of which there are a number of species. Uh, Megacolum becqueri, this is a, a really interesting species, uh, similar, similar to the Megacolum infusum, uh, which is uh, normally found on oak. Um, very local plant bug found on Scots pine in heathy and other habitats. And um, uh, I, I found this uh, very recently last year in, in um, Yorkshire, um, in South Yorkshire, by uh, knocking uh, a specimen, a male specimen, off uh, uh, a pine that was um, uh, accompanied by oak. And I assumed it was uh, infusum, but it actually was uh, the second specimen, uh, second Yorkshire specimen uh, of this species. So uh, a nice surprise. Um, but it, yes, it, I mean, it's at one time it's considered considered very southern species, and uh, is is uh, there is evidence that it's been working its way further northwards. Um, the previous record in Yorkshire was, um, I think, in the early two thousands. So. Um, it, it may be much more common than we realize. Um, it's also a, a mainly a predatory species that also uh, feeds on, on pine aphids. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, quite an, an engaging little uh, uh, plant bug here. Uh, it's, it's one of the uh, piliferous uh, ant-like uh, plant bugs. Uh, and this one's found on Scots pine. Um, there are about um, four species. The other species are, are found on uh, uh, willow and, and, and oak and other deciduous trees. Um, this is formerly a southern species, but can now be seen as far north as Yorkshire. Uh, we've had, uh, I think it's been around in Yorkshire since the 1990s, early 1990s, but very few records. And there's a recent record from Scotland. So uh, it's, again, it's a predatory species that feeds on several species of pine aphids. But its diet is also it's more more seems to be more flexible in its um, in its diet by being a sap feeder. Uh, again, another one that's uh, quite uh, a, a, a very attractive looking uh, plant bug. Uh, this one's um, Dichryscytus rufi penis. Um, mainly find it on Scots pine in a variety of situations. And uh, there's a photograph uh, of uh, Whitwell Moor to the right there where I've recorded it. Um, that would be about maybe 250 meters uh, above sea level. Um, so uh, they're widespread in, in Britain and Ireland uh, on, on, in such uh, habit, habitats and adults are from June to August. Uh, again, uh, I think these are also um, uh, feed on uh, 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 pine pine aphids as well. Uh, in uh, sort of a couple of uh, pair, a pair of uh, interesting myriads also uh, that occur on on Scots pine, and in the case of Plesiodema pinnatella on the right, there is it's also been recorded on spruces. Um, this one is was formerly confined to Scotland and Northern England, and and I think this is one of the species that was influenced in moving further south because of the, um, the trend in uh, planting more conifers uh, in the country following uh, uh, World War One uh, to to to, to uh, uh, gap up uh, uh, timber shortages. Uh, they're very similar, but as you can see, uh, Funicocorus obscurellus um, 
is uh, covered in uh, sil uh, sort of silvery sort of sp uh, uh, scales and, and fine hairs. And the pinatella is, is very sort of glabrous uh, without any hairs. Uh, but the, uh, it, it, the distinction is 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 terms of tibial spines are they they're, they're longer uh, they're longer in in obscurellus um, wider than the width of the tibia and 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 equal to or shorter uh, to the width of the tibia in pinatella um, I don't find very many records of these Phonicacarus obscurellus is uh, I, I don't often find it so it may be that these species are uh, are quite sort of found up high up in the canopy. Uh, there's another couple of species uh, from, uh, I think, Attractotomus. Uh, there's one Parvula, I think, is also found on Scots Pine, and the other one, uh, Magnicornis, is found on, um, I think it's on Spruces. Uh, and they're similar, uh, so they are, they're, they're, there's a similar, you know, confusing group of uh, these dark sort of myriads on conifers. Um, I uh, think my final one on uh, coniferous woodlands is, is an unusual one, Saradus cinnamomius, um, and this is a, a flat bug uh, that uh, uh, occurs on the bark scales, under the bark scales of young Scots pine trees in heathland habitat, and it is unusual uh, for being um, the only aridid that doesn't actually feed on uh, fungal hyphites, a sort of resin sap feeder. And the male is really uh, unusual looking. I've, I've got the photo there and shows that the, the, the forewings uh, uh, are really very narrowed. Um, and I can't imagine that they'd fly on those. Uh, and, and it's a, it's a condition known as stenoptery. So um, they're, they're referred to as stenopters. Um, Finally, uh, just a quick mention of uh, anthocorids, the flower bugs that you get on uh, coniferous woodland. So there's, there's three there that I've listed. Uh, confusingly, again, similar. <laughs> and a compicorus and uh, alpinus and pygmaeus is all, always, uh, not always um, straightforward. I, I mean, especially if you've got the host plants in, 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 in the vicinity and, uh, uh, I, I prefer to take males uh, and, and dissect them really for, for reliability of the record. Um, similarly to tetraflex by cuspis, I'd never, I'd never actually recorded that. And uh, in some cases, you know, they are difficult to, um, to record on, on, uh, on pine trees. Uh, I think you need to go out there in good weather, find a good tree that's accessible with plenty of cones. Um, the other, the, 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 the couple of species I haven't mentioned is the uh, cone, uh, the pine cone uh, uh, ground bug, and also the uh, spruce, uh, the spruce bug. Uh, they're, they're, uh, the, the, the former is very, very common uh, and is easily, uh, relatively easily sampleable, and spruce cone bug is is very much. Um, a rarer thing really but it might be due to the way that it's very sort of highly arboreal so very, only very up high up in the canopy. Uh, so um, on to the next uh, habitat um, I've sort of grouped heathlands and moors and acidic gra grassland. Uh, I've only got one sort of species that I'm sort of talking about with acidic grassland so um, so they are, it, this habitat is really quite an important habitat in terms of supporting uh, uh, the het bugs, uh, uh, faunas and uh, biomass really. And uh, heathlands in the south are really um, uh, quite uh, the most interesting uh, and uh, they, they do tend to support a more diverse fauna. Uh, and northern moors uh, and heaths, uh, they, they also support uh, a typical fauna, but usually, if you the further north you go, the um, uh, mostly in most cases the, the 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 more sort of ten it tends to be more impoverished. Uh, but the ideal sort of heathland uh, situation for bugs uh, for diverse uh, bug uh, assemblage is probably a mosaic of short vegetation and bare ground with a, a sort of diverse age range of heather and scattered trees and shrubs, old and young, uh, and these provide optimum conditions really. Um, so I'll just uh, 
mention a few. Uh, so coastal, coastal heathlands are, are quite interesting uh, and uh, are quite uh, support uh, a good uh, assemblage of ground bugs, for instance. Um, and uh, uh, several species are, are, are rarely found away from these, uh, have this habitat. Um, the following two are worth getting your eye into if you haven't already. And uh, they, are, they are sometimes difficult to record because they are strongly ground dwelling and you have to do a bit of uh, grubbing around. Uh, uh, but Microderma macrobacterium on the left-hand side is the most widespread. Uh, and uh, uh, Ishnachorus angustulus is perhaps not, um, hasn't as, as much fidelity to, to heathland habitats as, as Macrodema, but nevertheless, they can be found in the, the same sort of areas. I've recorded both in sort of coastal heathlands in the Isle of Man in recent years. So, um, and they are very similar, but uh, once you get your eye in, in, in uh, for them, they're, they're, they're easily separable. Another couple of ground bugs, uh, Scolopistethus decoratus is um, very widespread, similar to others in the in the genus, but uh, it's uh, there's a subtle difference in the uh, sort of uh, coloration of the um, antennal segments. Uh, in this one, it's all dark with a, a, a pale second uh, segment. Um, widespread in heaths and moors in England, Scotland and Wales, but less common in Ireland. Uh, Trapezonotus desertus, yeah, that's uh, a really uh, uh, interesting one. It's not re restricted to heathland and moor, but it's one that I tend to find uh, in, in heathland habitats. Uh, but, uh, and yes, I, I try to get males for reliability of, of, of the record. Um, uh, because uh, they, they, they are very confusingly similar. Um, again, oh, Cladosaurus ericae. Um, so this, it, uh, as I've said before, it closely resembles birch catkin bug. And uh, there is some uh, size overlap. Uh, but uh, I've heard one method of uh, separating them is to collect a series and then uh, 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 sort of measure the males and females and, uh, and, and come to a conclusion. Um, and with Cladoceris ericae, it tends to be the smaller of the species. Uh, there are some ways to separate. I've heard that they've, um, they do stridulate and on on different um, uh, sort of uh, frequencies, but it's below below the um, uh, the <laughs> uh, below what uh, can be practically recorded at the moment. So uh, uh, yeah, wide, widespread in England, Scotland, and Wales, and there is a small number of records from northeastern Ireland, but and, and mostly unlikely to occur outside heath and moorland habitat. Uh, I. Uh, I find it in very few heathland habitats. The heathland, the heathland habitats tend to be have long con continuity uh, and tend to be good quality heathland sites. Caranus uh, subapterus, the heathus hassimbag. I thought I'd include this in, uh, uh, but it's also recorded from dune habitat, so it's not truly a, a heathland thing. And it also closely resembles uh, another species, Caranus uh, uh, rudrophae, in size and appearance. Uh, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's a difficult uh, group, Caranus. Uh, uh, there is another Caranus that I uh, uh, I haven't mentioned here, and that's Caranus athiops, which has been uh, recently confirmed for Britain from Heathland sites. In fact, the first uh, records were from Thorn and Hatfield Moors. Uh, by Stuart Foster, so uh, they those date back to the 1990s. So that one has a very shiny uh, underside uh, in contrast to uh, these two species. Uh, 
another characteristic, couple of characteristic species of uh, heathland and moorland, uh, Orthotylus erisatorum, uh, readily recognised one. It's quite an active little bug uh, on, uh, in, in summer on, on the heathland areas, and it's uh, fairly easily recognised, but it's got really bright, bright yellow um, cuneus here. Uh, this is sometimes, this is a bit pale here, but it's quite br bright, and it's got a very sort of um, noticeable dark uh, pubescence. Um, uh, but always, uh, it can even occur in quite small areas of heathland in, uh, say, for instance, um, ex colliery sites. Uh, Nabis erisatorum, this damsel bug, um, its care needs to be taken with this one because there are other damsel bugs that, uh, like uh, Nabis rugosus, that occur on heathland habitats, and the and the two can look similar in colour, really. Uh, there are some records outside of heathland, so, so it's not strictly uh, a heathland species, but it, it is predominantly. Um, uh, another interesting species here I thought I'd mention, Halodapus rufescens. Uh, this is, uh, uh, there are, it, <laughs> There are some records, I've got some records from calcareous gra grassland, and most recently uh, I had one from uh, Alex Ramsey uh, from uh, a site in Salisbury Plain, uh, and not, uh, not sort of any heath in sight, but he sent me a photograph which seems to suggest that it is rufescens, and I've got a picture of Halodapus montadoni, which is its uh, 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 congena on on uh, calcareous chalk grasslands, and the two are very similar. Uh, but this um, Halodapus pontadoni has a, a sort of white uh, uh, white on the clavus, but it's dark on on on, on rufescence. And this picture here on the left hand side is um, from Oxford Museum of Natural History. The one the specimen on the right here is uh, the the oldest uh, het bug specimen that uh, from South Yorkshire, and that was from Thorn Moors. So that was when there was a lot more peat on the, on the moor as there is now. So, uh, but it must have been so big that uh, it was uh, provided suitable conditions for for this species to be uh, recorded there. Um, so, uh, just to quickly uh, cover species found on gorse and broom. Um, uh, we've got uh, a characteristic uh, grouping here, Heterocordialis tibialis, uh, May and July, widely distributed in Britain. I, I often get this uh, in beating uh, broom uh, on, uh, broom and, and gorse are fairly uh, widespread on, on many heathlands and moorlands. Uh, and if you're out at the right time of the year, just beating will uh, provide you with specimens. Uh, Anthocorus sarathamni is uh, very frequent locally here up in uh, up in South Yorkshire, uh, found throughout the year and widely distributed. Uh, strangely enough, very few records in Ireland at, at present. Uh, two species I thought of uh, tinged uh, lace bugs uh, that were worth mentioning because um, they can be confused um, with Dictonitis strychnoserva on broom and gorse. Uh, Adults from late June until October, and beating again is the best method of obtaining specimens. Um, the uh, strictness error, the, the best way of separating these is the sort of nature of the uh, antennal segments. As you can see, strictness error has very sort of thick um, third antennals, long, thick, and black third antennal segments. And the phylogenosa, um, which you get on, on broom, but I've also had it on. Um, sort of non-native brooms and gorses in some funny situations actually uh, and uh, that's uh, the, 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 the third antennal segment is obviously uh, different and has um, uh, shorter um, uh, spines on, the, on, on that segment. And occurring England, uh, uh, just north to Yorkshire, so uh, it just gets into uh, South Yorkshire here. Acidic grass, and this is the one species that I just thought I would mention. Um, I mean, acidic grassland uh, is uh, 
probably supports quite a, a, a range of, of, of uh, ground bugs, but not uh, the, many of these aren't strictly uh, uh, attached to uh, acidic grasses, actually sort of there because of the structure and character of, of, of the habitat really. Uh, and, and and rather than uh, than uh, the, the plant necessarily the plant species, and this one I selected was Conostethus roseus. It's, it's a fairly uncommon uh, mirrored bug, really. And uh, whenever I've recorded it, it tends to be on post-industrial sites. And I know that um, there's been a couple recently that uh, uh, of where I've found populations, and they, they, those have been lost. And this one is Woolly Colliery, just to the east of the M1 motorway in Barnsley. And this one's under threat of uh, another housing development. There are plans to sort of do, to mitigate for invertebrates here, but how they managed to do that on, uh, on this kind of um, habitat, it's going to be, uh, I think it's gonna be quite difficult, um, but I have very few records of this nationally. Um, and on my record, um, uh, of all the thousands of records that we, we do have, there's only two, uh, only two um, that have been submitted. So yes, um, uh, acidic grassland seems to be uh, 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 the main sort of uh, uh, habitat type for this, uh, this striking uh, plant bug. It really is it's similar to Conostethus, um, uh, Venustus, which which you get on similar kinds of sites, but they occur on, they require um, mayweed in in disturbed areas. So uh, and and uh, uh, so again, it's um, uh, it's 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 easily separable from from this one. But it, again, it's got it's more green and and red in in uh, in appearance. Uh, so terrestrial bugs of calcareous and chalk grassland, a quick introduction. Um, aspect is important for providing suitable microclimate, uh, especially south and southwesting, southwest facing uh, uh, best. And also uh, high plant diversity, including rare species uh, is, is, is um, uh, key and also a sort of, uh, I would say that uh, the, a slightly varied topography as well, sort of with, with um, uh, exposed uh, exposed uh, substrate like boulders and, and um, hard rock is also useful because uh, that tends to contribute to uh, higher temperatures, uh, which many of these uh, chalk grassland and calcareous grassland bugs like. Grazing by rabbits is also mostly beneficial and maintains the open habitat, reduces uh, 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 reduces the threat of scrub invasion. Uh, first, uh, a nice one here, um, uh, Macroplac braseleri, uh, first recorded in the UK in 1968 and restricted to sites in Gloucestershire and Somerset and the Gower Peninsula in Wales. A really interesting uh, bug. I've never I've never recorded it, but uh, uh, Breen Downs is one of the, the classic sites for it in, in North Somerset and it occurs on you know, south facing slopes with supporting rock roses and rock roses uh, do seem to be a, a key plant for many of these um, calcareous chalk grass, uh, grassland species. Uh, Tenicephalus hortianus, um, this is a myriad uh, that is widespread in limestone and chalk areas. Um, it's not really uh, not really recorded outside of it uh, because of the uh, requirement of uh, its uh, host rock roses. Here's a place uh, called Preston Scar in Wensleydale, uh, which I was uh, uh, privileged to to record actually uh, and record here and. Uh, I did find this uh, plenty of specimens here. Uh, it was new to Vice County 65, so uh, it was quite uh, uh, a nice uh, bug to find. Another uh, sort of more distinctive is this Mary called Placatula celadonicus, and uh, it's something that I've never recorded, uh, but is mostly uh, a southern sort of uh, based first discovered in Bedfordshire 
in the sort of late 1970s and um, it occurs in a variety of calcareous and chalk grassland sites uh, in, in Bedfordshire and neighbouring counties such as Oxfordshire and Berkshire and, and Bucks and East Sussex. So it's, um, it remains to be seen whether it actually uh, manages to uh, spread from those areas because the, ho the host Phil Scabies is a, is a fairly common plant uh, across much of, of Britain. Um, but it says, uh, yeah, even reported from small patches of, of, of grassland in, in artificial, perhaps artificially created habitats, really. Another interesting one here of the uh, chalk grassland assemblage is Strongylochorus mucocephalus. This is a distinctive little plant bug, but um, has a very widespread range. Um, you know, right up to, to Scotland, really. And there's, there's, at the moment, there's one old record from Wales, but it, it may be under-recorded from there. Um, curs and chalk grasslands on dry south-facing slopes. Again, rock roses are the main host, uh, but it's also uh, said to occur on harebell and ladies' bed straw. And hand searching or sweep, sweeping chalk grassland is, is the way to search for it. Um, I've, I've sort of, taken one in the Peak District uh, and it was on an anthill and it has um, uh, an avoidance technique. It's like a jumping bean when you, it, it tries to avoid capture. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a funny thing to sort of see, uh, and, uh, but it's, it's effective. It's uh, uh, to, to, uh, an effective avoidance strategy, I think. Uh, here's another one, uh, Cataplatus fabricii, a tingid, uh, that I've only ever recorded it once, and I, I guess I'm sort of, uh, this is the only place I've ever recorded it in Lindrick Quarry, that's, it's not really a natural habitat, but uh, it's, uh, it's restricted in, in Yorkshire to the magnesium limestone quarries, there's, I think there's one other uh, quarry record for it. Um, and it, it, it's the case in um, many other parts of the country where, it, uh, where, where the geology is, is suitable. Um, and uh, the, the host plant is, is a fairly common uh, uh, oxide daisy, um, but I, I've never recorded it outside of, of, of the line of limestone regions. Uh, Another, I'm mentioning a, sh uh, a shield bug here, Canthophorus impressus, um, and this is uh, a very interesting uh, case of uh, a, a rare shield bug, relatively rare shield bug on a, a, a rare species of uh, host. And it's, uh, you can see it's sort of a burying shield bug of the Sydneydi, and it's uh, historically misidentified as a very similar Canthophorus dubious. <laughs> so uh, there's been complications in the past with, uh, 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 with its identification. Uh, nymphs, uh, uh, as you can see, are strikingly uh, uh, marked. Uh, all life stages are strongly ground dwelling and it is because it feeds on bastard toad flax, and this is a, a sort of scarce semi-parasitic plant, which is prostrate, has a prostrate growth um, uh, trailing on the, along the ground. And it's found in uh, short, uh, sort of species rich, uh, short calcareous grassland. And the stronghold is actually in Wiltshire uh, and associated, uh, or oh, this plant is associated with Carex humilis and, and mostly conformed, uh, confined to warm south uh, southwest facing slopes. So the, 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 these has a de demand, high demand for uh, suitable microclimates, um, warm microclimates. Uh, here's a sort of uh, presence, as, as, as you can see, there's some areas uh, where it has, um, uh, has, has been lost and, uh, but there are recent records um, and, and Wiltshire and the Isle of Wight seem to be strongholds and it could be overlooked in, in, in other sites. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a question of uh, finding uh, where, the, where the host plants are 
and in combination with uh, assessing the the, the, the the aspect and what have you, and then grubbing really and hand searching. Um, so wetland habitats now, uh, how am I doing for timing? Am I all right, Leanne? Okay, I'll carry on. Uh, wetland habitats support some notable species of terrestrial bug. Um, Toolfen and Rush Sedric communities do provide the most interest and some species are bog specialists, um, uh, some inhabiting uh, mosses. Um, but the first one that I'm going to talk about is this uh, ground bug called Lampraplax picea. And this is one of the um, bugs <coughs> that is considered a, a, a sort of a bog specialist. Uh, but I've been, we've been beginning to sort of get records that are not quite sort of um, perhaps uh, uh, in, in line with that view. And uh, I've had recent um, uh, records, one from Foxglove Covert, which isn't really sort of, uh, doesn't contain really much sphagnum bog, but it's more uh, a sort of uh, wet, rushy, sort of sedgy um, habitats. Um, and I got a tube of, of these last year. Uh, 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 well, but I think it was swept. I think they were swept, actually. And uh, it's a distinctive bug, uh, a, a, an all chocolate brown bug uh, that's uh, fairly shiny. And on the pronotum, uh, it sort of split half half and half, uh, the, the rear half is sort of coarsely uh, uh, punctured, as you can see <laughs> on that right hand photograph and, and sort of more, more smoother on the front half. And it's got a very, um, it's got a sort of flange, a flat flange along most of the edge of the, uh, on either edge of the, uh, the pronotum, uh, fairly distinctive bug, but not, we're not sure if it's uh, that um, as, as much a, an indicator of, uh, sphagnum bogs as uh, it has uh, been previously been believed to be. Uh, rush flushes, um, I, I thought were worth a mention. Uh, Cytorinus caricus, I mean, this is a, a local bug that I, I, I do record in uh, rush flushes and uh, uh, particularly uh, the bigger uh, that they are, the better. And uh, it's one of these bugs that feeds, is a specialist that feeds on the eggs of plant and leaf hoppers. Um, these habitats do uh, support um, big populations of, of, uh, of uh, hoppers uh, and uh, any, any sweeping uh, that, you, that you do will, will, uh, you'll, you, you will find, uh, find them easily. So it's uh, utilising a, a, a ready available source uh, of, of um, feeding. Uh, very widespread in Britain and Ireland and uh, is always, always long winged. So. <coughs> Teratochoris saundersi, this is uh, uh, one of uh, four species of Teratochoris and they all look very similar and they are, are all associated with wetland habitats. And Saundersia is the one that I record mostly, uh, especially in, in sort of lowland situations here in South Yorkshire. Um, and I think uh, there, there are other Teratochorus which are more northerly and more upland, uh, uh, like Teratochorus viridis. Uh, um, but yes, I mean, uh, here's Woodhouse Washlands Nature Reserve, uh, one reserve that uh, I sampled uh, a number of specimens from just sweeping rushes and uh, you know, just have to be out at the right time. July is, is really the optimal time for these things to be out. Uh, a few more from rush dominated rush rich habitats. Uh, Chymus melanocephalus, uh, uh, a good rush species. I think once you get your eye in for that, it's uh, easy to identify and can be confused with uh, its uh, congener on, on sedge-rich vegetation. And sometimes you can get the two on, on, a, on the same site. But uh, Chymus glandicolor has is, is got um, a sort of, uh, it's got a, a longitudinal ridge on the, uh, pale ridge on the uh, scutellum and which continues onto the uh, pronotum. Uh, Tithus pygmaeus, uh, this is a really uh, nice bug. Um, 
again, it's a it's a myriad that's uh, dev uh, evolved to sort of uh, uh, predate um, the eggs and nymphs of plant and leaf hoppers that occur in rushes. Um, it's uh, it's it's sort of um, got a, a distribution mostly sort of um, in north of England, but not too far north and further down to the south. But I've, I've also found it on the Isle of Man, uh, on the airs, uh, in a in a sort of area of it was a horsetail and uh, horsetail rich vegetation. There weren't much rush at all, so I think. The, impo the importance is, is is vegetation structure here and, and the, the presence of suitable um, uh, uh, host species of, of, uh, of, of um, homoptera, of hoppers. <clears throat> so if we're going to uh, more rich, marsh rich and species rich fen habitat, um, again, we get some distinctive species in this kind of Habitat, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going. Um, so the first one I want to mention is Polymerus palustris. Um, and uh, this is, this is uh, like other poly polymerus, uh, it, it, is, uh, it requires uh, as host plants, uh, bed straws. Uh, but this one is uh, utilizing marsh bed straws. So uh, is uh, a, a, a frequent uh, uh, component of, of uh, wetland um, uh, head bug faunas. It's, it is similar in, uh, in, in, in appearance to other uh, species, polymerous species, particularly unifasciatus, and it um, can be separated uh, uh, by, by looking at the extent of dark and pale uh, uh, areas on the, on, on the forewings. Uh, but uh, these other polymerous species are, are to be found in drier habitats. It's widespread in Britain and Ireland, um, and but we've few records from southwest England and only far as far north as southwest Scotland. So attra an attractive, uh, striking species to, to find in wetland. Uh, also, a compass roof hippies. This is a, a really uh, good uh, indicator of good quality wetlands, where which uses um, uh, uh, as host marsh valerian. Um, one or two a compass species in Britain. Polypies are very rare. Uh, non wetland species. Two, two more wetland habitats. Adelphus ceticornis. This is a really distinctive uh, bug uh, uh, in, in, uh, in these habitats and uh, utilizes bird's foot trefoil and also marsh pea in some uh, places. And it's mostly a southern species, uh, occurring in fens in East Anglia mainly, but but sort of more marsh habitats uh, in in uh, elsewhere. Uh, as I say, it's not likely to be under recorded, but it, it is it is fairly local. Uh, Prachybrachius fracticollis, uh, one of two uh, wetland species. This one is more widespread and is uh, uses hosts a range of uh, sedges in fen and marshy habitats. And it does have a wide distribution. Uh, the other, uh, Pagabratius luridus, is more associated with, with sort of boggy habitats in the, in the south of England. Uh, finally, uh, just one uh, species that I'd like to mention of poor fen swamp habitat, Chalakis typhi. Um, restricted to reed maces in, uh, and uh, occurs readily around pond and lake margins, river and ditch margins. And it's often numerous. Uh, you see it on uh, 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 the, the flowering spikes of, of, of reed mace. Uh, and you can, you can spot these just using binoculars from uh, far back the, from the pond uh, edge. Um, it has been spreading further north in recent years and is now recorded from Scotland and uh, also recently from Northern Ireland. And it's also been introduced into North America uh, for some time now. And uh, uh, because typha, the typhus that we get here are whole Arctic, so they're the same in most of North America. Uh, so terrestrial, going on to terrestrial bugs of coastal habitats. Um, uh, Sand dunes are important habitats for terrestrial bugs and coastal cliffs support species of restricted distribution in Britain and Ireland. And I'll go on to discuss a couple of those. And salt marshes also support a fairly specialized fauna. Shingle beaches um, 
tend to support a, a limited non-specialist fauna, so I won't be um, uh, mentioning shingle beaches in this presentation. The uh, first one uh, I'd like to do is Trigonotylus samicola. This is a, a very um, characteristic bug of the sort of uh, fixed June, four June zone. And uh, it uh, feeds on uh, pine air, sort of sand, cooch grass, uh, very, very sort of um, uh, coastal species. Uh, and uh, uh, I have had some inland reports on this far, far inland ones, which are probably um, not, not, not really the case. Um, Biosis maritimus, um, this is a, a nice bug, perhaps not uh, strictly a coastal dune species, because I think it's also uh, been being recorded in, in rocky shores as well. Uh, but uh, uh, the host plants seem to be varied, really, thrift and st stone crops and, and a few other species like erodium, possibly. Um, continental populations not restricted to coastal areas, really. This is probably um, the reason uh, is, is that we're, the, the biosis is on, like other bugs, uh, coastal bugs, is on the edge of its range here. So it's, it's really sort of not sort of uh, found its way inland. But there is some... Uh, that there has been some inland records of, of late, which might be an early indication that uh, things are changing with this bug. So uh, another similar striking uh, ground bug is Pleonosimus variens. Uh, not something I've recorded, but uh, it's, again, it's more largely confined to sand dunes than biosis, I think. And it has a disjunct population uh, distribution in the UK and occurs in, in South Wales and in the Sandwich Bay area of Kent and not in between. And it's associated again with a number of plants, including common stalksbill. And it, it is, because uh, of its small size, it is potentially very easy to, to, to overlook. Um, so worth looking out for in any dunes between uh, Kent and Pembrokeshire. Uh, the Crenocephalus agilis, I think this final one that I want to sort of discuss, uh, one of two spurge bugs in Britain, uh, the adults over winter, and peak in spring and autumn, uh, and it feeds on uh, sea spurge and Portland spurges, and um, in mobile dunes dominated by marram grass, and it's a very uh, strict, restricted to the south and west coasts of, of England and Wales, uh, and uh, uh, not really likely to be confused with uh, the the other spurge, but which is Dicranocephalus media, uh, and that that occurs on wood wood spurge, uh, uh, and, and it, it's probably more rare species, I think, but is being uh, found on uh, other types of spurge in different situations. Uh, right, salt marsh. Uh, a few species from salt marsh uh, worth mentioning. Uh, this is Conostethus griseus, uh, a plant bug that feeds on uh, mostly on putzinella, the uh, salt marsh grasses. Uh, very close resemblance to its congener C. Uh, Con Conostethus brevis, might not be actually distinct species. And uh, it occurs on uh, the sort of uh, widely on on sort of coasts uh, from from uh, the English East Coast down round to the Welsh coast and Cumbria coast, and there has been uh, a small number of records uh, from from uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, Henostarus halophilus. This is a, a really restricted uh, species of ligade uh, ground bug uh, to the Kent and Essex uh, coastlines. Uh, there's a few locations in North Norfolk, but I think it was, uh, I think it's an RDB2, and I've only rec recorded it once from Russian marshes in the Isle of Sheppey there, uh, which is um, on sea purslane in sort of nicely vegetated areas away from, you know, salt marsh areas uh, in the upper salt marsh, uh, not regularly inundated. Orthotides moncrefi is, is the other uh, myriad, uh, well, it's another species of, of myriad that uh, should be looked out for in this sort of situation, also on C, C Pursley, and probably has a sort of um, uh, uh, slightly different distribution around the coast, but uh, is quite uh, abundant where, where, it's, where, where you find it. 
uh, Othoitis rubidus, um, glasswort species. Um, and uh, again, uh, is very distinctive uh, because of uh, uh, its, uh, uh, its coloring. It's a, a very sort of uh, reddish uh, mirrored, uh, uh, whereas Moncrief is green. Uh, this is uh, this is red, uh, and it is a very scarce uh, plant, but again restricted to uh, uh, coastal locali co localities from Norfolk to the Isle of Wight and Hampshire. Uh, some indication that it's it's uh, it's declined as well. Uh, Parapiesma quadratum, uh, a, a beet bug that is also on C. Pers Lane in uh, salt marshes, but there's also uh, inland records which seem to suggest that it, it can utilise other kinds of uh, Chenopodia ci rather than C. Pers Lane. Uh, coastal uh, Cliffs, uh, two classic species here, Terapnetus stalifeliformis and Terapisonotus alrichi, on the edge of their range, uh, associated with oxide daisy, uh, uh, Terapisonotus alrichi, uh, increasingly getting some inland records of this. So we wondered if there was some possibility that this might be, uh, there might be some movement here uh, in its distribution. Uh, Terapnetus stalifeliformis is, is a very distinctive uh, bug that's associated with uh, the Formica fusca and behaves like it. Uh, and is, uh, although restricted, its, it's uh, population seem to be stable. So uh, those are uh, two uh, fairly restricted at the moment uh, distribution uh, uh, bugs. And another uh, Bug, uh, ground bug to uh, refer to as Henostaris laticeps uh, with uh, remarkable um, extended eyes. Uh, uh, they have, uh, they're restricted to high, hard dry coastal cliffs uh, where there are suitable warm conditions. It's on buckthorn plantain, but it tends to like the um, a poor quality plantain spe um, uh, specimens uh, or stressed plants. Uh, has been recorded from Essex coast uh, historically, but it's really the southwest and South Wales coast which provide the strongholds, and the most easterly modern record is from the Isle of Wight. Uh, synanthropic habitats, finally, um, just uh, a, a sort of description of uh, artificial and synanthropic habitats, which are widespread all over the country, but um, het bugs have become. Uh, uh, habituated to these, and uh, there are uh, 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 ones that are now chiefly known for its synanthropy. Uh, I'll go th run through very quickly some of the uh, some of these. Xylochorus calixinus. Um, it's uh, very similar to Lictochorus campestris, but it's smaller. Uh, found in uh, these kind of uh, situations uh, in. Um, uh, like do like warm environments so in in summer there was uh, uh populations can build up in in such situations um Lictochorus campestris uh is uh, another sort of uh litter rich um uh, sort of anthocorid uh in in all sorts of situations uh and um it has a wild world, worldwide distribution uh, due simply to the activities of man spreading it around. Um, probably now less numerous because uh, of, of sanitation, but um, uh, uh, I still do get records of this uh, uh, occasionally. Uh, bed bugs, uh, classic um, sort of synanthropic species dependent on, on man. Uh, a blood feeder, and there has been a resurgence of, of records uh, due to a number of factors, uh, the, the popular, popularity of uh, foreign travel, and also uh, it's, it's, uh, it has developed resistance to conventional uh, chemical treatments to control it. Uh, Few other uh, there's bat bugs and martin bugs that are also sort of uh, considered to uh, occur in synanthropic habitats, uh, uh, especially on on nests on buildings and uh, roosts in buildings. Reduvius personatus, um, yes, this is uh, the uh, the fly bug. It's quite a sizable bug, 
and uh, I get most of the records uh, from uh, the sort of Midlands areas and south of the Midlands and uh, uh, it's it's nice that it's still holding its own there and uh, it's such a, quite nocturnal and attracted to light, so it, I do get some uh, quite a lot of records from uh, moth traps. So uh, yes, around buildings is most of the records I get uh, around buildings and workshops and what have you. Uh, another one, Lassioglosis osidentalis is a recent addition to the fauna, um, uh, a conifer species. Uh, uh, and uh, has uh, spread quite widely across the country. Um, but it is sort of, most of the sightings are urban and uh, particularly in autumn when they're looking for uh, uh, hibernating sites, they quite often want, uh, fly into buildings and homes where, where the windows are left open. Uh, next one is Clostrotomus trivialis, again, another uh, recent, uh, relatively recent arrival to, to the UK. Um, and very polyphagous. It uh, used to be a, a, a Mediterranean pest of olives, uh, and amazingly, it's it's transformed its uh, its sort of behaviour to occur on a wide range of plants. And this is um, this has been spreading all over the place. Really, uh, next slide. It just shows you uh, from London. Uh, it's it's sort of spread even into Scotland, and we've got some records from Northern Ireland. So it's, uh, it's a, a very um, un, almost unfussy really uh, uh, bug and uh, is, uh, I'm, I'm sure is set to sort of spread even, uh, become even more familiar in, in many other uh, cities and towns of, of, uh, in Britain. Uh, just a quick Aracatus longiceps again, uh, discovered a, 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 new, a recent, relatively recent discovery in London and is now um, uh, well, it's now being found in uh, you know Cambridge uh, in sites in Oxford, Norfolk, and even in Lincolnshire. So we're expecting that you know it, it, it will at some stage uh, reach here in South Yorkshire. Uh, some uh, parks and gardens uh, species uh, in conifers, as Oscillus depressus. Um, you know, this, this is a, a, a bug that's most recorded in Rawson Cyprus, and it's often found with juniper shield bug. I always find this in sort of uh, uh, abandoned uh, sort of uh, business parks and where the landscaping is, has, has got these um, uh, cypresses. Eremichorus fenestratus, uh, again, is uh, with the, the populations are thought to be continental and they've come over here and colonized and uh, are now uh, becoming more widespread on cypresses. Uh, finally, uh, uh, a sort of Clamidanus evanescens. This is, uh, this is a remarkable little bug, um, which used to be very rare, but is now much more common and occurs on stone crops and most sedum species seem to support it, uh, often in parks and gardens and cemeteries and especially on post-industrial sites. And it's, you know, we've got quite a lot of records now over the last, 10 years, I would say, um, uh, of, of, of this, uh, this bug in all sorts of situations. So here's further information. Um, uh, I, I think the, the, the information on habitats is very widely, um, widely spread in the literature really. And it was, it's really hard to sort of uh, come up with uh, something that sort of covers it all really, but uh, I hope this presentation has, um, uh, uh, has been an attempt to sort of try and uh, 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 synthesize all uh, the main habitats really. So uh, I hope people have had um, some use uh, from listening in and thank you for your time. And uh, we'll go over to the, uh, you know, little question and answer session, hopefully. That's absolutely brilliant, Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you've, you know, you've, you've covered a huge number of species and I really like how you've structured it really. Oh, thank uh, you. You, know, you know, to be able to look through your, well, I'll be looking again, hopefully through, through a recording of, of this, but just going through a particular habitat that you then might visit 
and and then knowing what to keep an eye out for or, or coming back with something and and that might lead you closer to it than you might be you know struggling around yeah with first of all so you know that's that's going to be really helpful and um yeah thank you so you know great great photos as well and great tips in there yeah. Well, uh, you, you're welcome. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we, you know, that, that it was the right, <laughs> it was the right timing. I was worried about going over time really on that, but uh, uh, I hope that uh, I, I got a lot of uh, uh, tremendous uh, pleasure from from producing this, and uh, and hope to maybe, um, I mean, some of those habitats could deserve a, a whole presentation on them uh, on themselves really. Uh, and uh, so it was it was quite a, a challenge to try and uh, get as much as I could get in but hopefully uh, that that's of, been of benefit um, okay absolutely and I, I think it gives gives a lot of food for thought in terms of some of those southern things that may be you know maybe yeah. already yeah with, with us in the north and, and just to keep an eye out for um, when we're out and about sure. Um, okay, there's, um, uh, we have, yeah, yeah, had a first question, I think, from Elaine um, in the chat, which was, um, what, well, you, you might have put them now in the further information, to be honest, but what, what books or keys would you recommend for the harder Miridae species? Well, um, we had a presentation uh, at Liverpool Museum on uh, when we had a day on myriads didn't we and I did use an updated uh, key of um, Bernard Nows which was produced back in you know over 10 years now and what I've been trying to do is is make it as user friendly as possible and it's still in a I mean I'm, I'm quite happy to sort of send uh, a copy of this key to anyone who's interested in in wanting to see it uh, but it's I wouldn't say it was exactly a beginner's key and uh, I, th I think it is uh, uh, demanding uh, in in terms of knowledge but I've tried to sort of um, uh, improve it and include all the sort of species that have uh, since uh, been added to the uh, mirrored fauna since Bernard had had uh, uh, produced it um, and uh, there is a, also a ground uh, there's also a ground bugs key so the two biggest families I'm I'm trying to sort of develop keys that are, are more user friendly and uh, uh, but if anybody wants draft keys of those uh, I'm quite happy to uh, send them through through you through yourself I suppose um, through Tenipterra I'd be happy to do that. Okay, so if so, if anybody wants those yeah. keys, they could ask us, yeah. and we we could send send them on. Yeah. There's also um, I also sort of produced the um, there's a there's a document I say I, I produced for the participants as well, and it was um, the introduction to terrestrial true bugs. Uh, that's like what I. Oh. Oh, I, I don't that. think that will work particularly well, Jim. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it's just a, a handy little guide uh, introduction to the state, uh, to, to uh, het bugs in Britain, and also sort of a little bit of, um, uh, of information about recording. It sort of probably reflects a lot of the information that's on the British Bugs website. So, um, so that's something that I can uh, can send out to anybody who wants to to get some more information about head bu bugs in general and the characteristics of our fauna. So would that be okay? Yeah, yeah, that that would be fine. Um, okay, great, thank you, Jim. Um, so well, the ne next question in the chat were, um, is from Yvonne asking, where can I learn? genital dissection <laughs> um mm. i i could jump in here jim first of all that was excellent that was really really informative 
Okay, thanks. Um, I think you covered a huge amount there. Yeah. Um, I think we, it would be really good to have a, a demonstration of sort of dissection techniques uh, as part of a workshop one time. Did, did, did we ever do this? Has it ever happened? Uh, I think it'd be a really useful thing to, to incorporate in the future. Yeah, I, I think I did that, Gary, didn't I? On, on, on one of the, the two workshops that weekend, uh, I'm not sure it was, I, th I think it was a sort of half successful. <laughs> I can't remember what I dissected, but I think it was a salus. Do you remember? Yeah, I, I wasn't around. I wasn't around a lot oh, of the workshop. Uh, I was sort of working in, the, in right. the background, but um, I did do a I, demonstration though. <laughs> yeah, i I think it's I think it's a bit it's a bit tricky with our with our setup because you have to sort yeah, of look at the big screen, it and is. you really you want to do it with a stereo microscope. Certainly, don't you? So we we need to improve our setup a bit. Having said that, I think I think there's a bit of a a bit of a niche for you know, short YouTube videos of about three minutes on, on different groups of vertebrates showing you, the, you know, the best methods yeah. to do really. I, th I think there's a the scope for that sort of thing to, to help. But. Yeah, that's something I've considered producing in the past, but I, I just think I don't really have um, the right kind of camera facilities. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like, to, I'd like to produce something about how how I, you know, process material and carve things up and dissect things, but I, I think it's difficult to film it. You know, yeah, that's 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 a that's a limiting factor. And I'm not saying that I want to do that because I think my way's, you know, the the only right way. But it's just yeah. um, a way, and mm -hmm. you know, other people might get something from it. Um, I think, yeah, you're right, Gary. There's there there definitely is a uh, a sort of gap there. Um, it would be it would be a useful thing to do but i think you do need one of those very nice you need one of those very nice sort of overhead cameras don't you i think um, i think you do you have to you have yeah. to have a bit of a setup going on and yeah mm. but i think because with with gentle dissection apart from people learning in workshops or, or learning off watching somebody else uh the, there's so many everyone has a slightly different way of doing it because it's mostly just yeah. down in a few sort of handbooks you know like a coleopterous handbook or something where where you can't really get to the to to the detail of someone actually using the forceps with that with that sort of thing so it's it's, it's this sort of skill that everybody does differently i, I think but um it, yeah we, we'll have to think more on that i think yeah See if we can get a set up together and get some experts to give it a go. Sit, see what we can come up with. Uh, right, I'll try and find the um, next question I can see. Okay, from uh, Tofnod, uh, which is actually, sorry, Richard, so that would be Richard Gallen. Um, so, Currently doing a survey on montane invertebrates in North Wales, altitude up to 850 metres, pitfalls, vacuum and hand searching. Wow. Any species like to be up there, mm. I should try to target or plants to search? <laughs> um, I would say nothing very sort of acutely interesting and specialist. Um, Upland, the upland stuff tends to be more interesting in Scotland. Mm. And in general, bugs do like warm environments. So they're, they're always by definition, you know, less species rich in, in the northern parts of Britain and in the uplands. But certainly there are there are some more, there are some more unusual species up there, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. say they're they're wildly specialized and, and wildly interesting. Jim, can you think of anything? Well, I thought maybe some of the <clears throat> some of the shore bugs might you, you tend to get some uh, no, impactful shore theory. bugs, uh, yeah. which uh, uh, te <laughs> technically they're they're sort of with the uh, the water bugs recording scheme, but um, 
they are they are uh, uh, an important group uh, you know in in sort of wet habitats in uh, more upland areas and uh, they I think there are a few boreal species um, uh, that uh, are probably worth looking out for so any 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 kind of salvids uh, I would um, you know definitely be very interested in 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 getting if I was doing that kind of survey work yeah I think that's Rich, what I'm going Rich is often in the in the box looking for <laughs> mm. spiders. Um, obviously... Yeah, I'd, I'd say the Orkinorinka would probably be more interesting yeah. than the hits. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, Rather... the, yeah, the beetles would be interesting, obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously we you we could name a couple of very uh, nice mm. rarities in that area, like the Snowden leaf beetle and yeah. uh, Lystus montanus. Exactly. Cool. Nebria nivalis, possibly, or is that only in Scotland? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Um, well, that ground beetle is in Wales. Nivalis. Is it? Right. right. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's Cadaridris I'm doing, and there's not much wetlands up there. So, right. I'll, I'll give it a shot and see what I can find. Look okay. For offers, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, good luck with that, Richard. Um, okay. Question from Cass Barrett. Um, what can you suggest for people learning to ID with microscopes? Oh, no. Uh, learning to ID with microscopes, such dissections, etc., to ensure we are actually getting the right, the, the ID right. So this, so, 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 Cass, you're using a perhaps a key and a microscope to try and identify it. Are you talking about really whether to getting someone to check it, or you know making sure that you have a good photograph when you put it onto iRecord if you if you're sure yourself what it is. I think is that is that what we're getting at. I think uh, perhaps um, perhaps she's asking about the sort of photographic resources um, of genitalia to to accompany keys and um, when when you're doing dissections at a microscope. Um, so yeah, those sorts of resources are a bit limited actually. Mm. I mean there there are there are figures of, of genitalia in Bernard Nor's key. And there are some in in Peter Kirby's. Um, the difficulty with some of the, the genitalia, uh, particularly um, Jim talked about Salus as a large group of plant bugs on deciduous trees, well, trees, uh, and they're hard to identify. And often yeah. you need to look at the genitalia. And those are really three dimensional and it's very difficult to depict them on a two dimensional yes. page or a screen yes. and there's actually a really good document which was produced by someone in the in the course of her PhD um, and she did she looked at all the central European species of Salus and, and that that is actually available on the web and and should be yeah. flagged up as a kind of re resource for um, more more advanced sort of um, people doing het bugs particularly um, the myriads so I, that's that's something i would i would mm. definitely recommend um the thesis is by denise weininger yes, and um it's called the salus of central europe it's, it's on the web but there are also books which have some figures in um uh, the finnish book has some genitalia mm. figures the um and so does the uh, the Danish book, I think. But those are currently the the only things uh, really available. And yeah, it is difficult sometimes matching up what you're seeing down the microscope yeah. with something on a page. There's also the Fond de France uh, That's bag true. and paper, which I yeah. think you can download as a as a PDF now. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can. 
so that's that's sort of readily available but again uh uh the, the, you get a, a a sort of one um dimension sort of presentation of the genitalia so sometimes uh you wonder if uh it's presented to reinforce the difference right differences rather than the actual differences so it's a it's a tricky uh it's a tricky thing to uh yeah to interpret sometimes uh, these um, genitalia. It might be easier to produce an, to produce an illustrated step-by-step -step document rather than a video. Yeah, I, I mean, think, I'm... Yeah, I, yeah I, I, my thoughts about dissection are that um, there are, you know, not every dissection is the same. So you can start with something relatively easy, straightforward. So, for example, if you look at Roger Hawkins' book, The Shield Bugs of Surrey, which is a you know, sort of classic um, mm. introductory book, very accessible. So that has a bit on the dissection of urogaster. And all you have to do is pull out the genital segment with a, with a hooked pin and, and sort of look into it, really. Mm. Um, after just peeling a little bit off, you, you know, it's quite big and, you know, you don't have to have some incredible dexterity or um skill level or, or um, practice to do it so that could be something you start with then you might go on to sort of a ligate where you just have to take off the paramere or a myriad where you just take off the paramere and then you might go on to something like a you know a salus where you have to take the whole of the at the end of the abdomen off and and yeah. carefully um you know dissect out the the diagus so you know i i think it shouldn't people shouldn't find it daunting because you, you can just you know start with what you're comfortable with and if you've got a number of specimens yeah um, it doesn't matter if you know you mess some of them up and doing this stuff is how you learn really just try it yourself and um you know um and and teach yourself in in, in, a, in a way there's no magic there's no magic to it <laughs> you know we all sort of learn by failing in a way mm. when, when you're doing these things yeah, i mean one times. thing i will say dissecting beetles and bugs is massively more easy than than dissecting moths and <laughs> hundreds of people yeah. seem to seem to get into that and it's oh it's incredibly difficult mm. dissecting female you know um spermatheci these these micro moths and staining them and yeah oh honestly it's far far easier than that right that, that that's encouraging and I, I like your idea tristan of um just the different levels of dissection and maybe maybe doing something with that because it is yes some some are just much more accessible dissections are they than yeah. others There's different mm, levels. So. yeah definitely i mean you know certainly with i mean bugs are not as robust as beetles, but they're kind of similar in 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 terms of the the, the anatomy of dis dissection. And certainly, when you've got a male, you know, it's just a case of putting in some forceps yeah. and sort of pulling out the male genitalia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I will maybe I think we'll draw it to a close there then for this evening. Um, but well. Thank you so much, Jim, for that really excellent and informative presentation. And, You're welcome. And, and thank you both for, you know, some really comprehensive answers there and some really useful full tips um, in the question and answers. So. No, you're welcome, really. Jim did, did it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, folks. Really, I was, I was pleased to do it. Yeah, really good.